Hello everyone, in this video we are talking about how the way of ranging a code. In other words, we are focusing about GPS ranging. So, GPS satellite constant continuously transmit navigation signals in two frequencies in L band. L, uh, and each satellite send down exactly the same two radio frequencies which are L1 and L2 in the, the frequencies we have shown here. These signals contain ranging codes and navigation data which allow users to compute the traveling time from satellite to the receiver and the satellite coordinates at any epoch. So to understand what is GPS ranging uh, is a uh, I'll tell you about a bit about a um, electronic distance measurement so EDM ranging and uh, GPS ranging are quite similar so if you have an idea about how EDM ranging works uh, works out you can have a clear idea about how the, the way of GPS ranging works so um, EDM when we uh, pay attention towards EDM ranging it only needs one frequency standard because it uh, its electromagnetic wave travels to a retro prism and uh, it reflect back to its point of origin so EDM uh, is both the transit and the receiver of the signal so therefore uh, the instrument can take a half time, half the time of elapsing between the moment of transmission and the moment of reception. So, m multiplying by the speed of light, so we can calculate uh, the distance. That's how EDM works. So, when it comes to GPS ranging, the only way ranging is used in GPS is a bit complicated. So, unlike uh, EDM it requires clocks, deep two clocks. The broadcast signal from the satellite uh, have to be corrected by the receiver. Uh, nevertheless, uh, in other words, uh, the full time elapsed uh, between the instant GPS signal leaves a satellite and arrives the receiver has to be multiplied by the speed of light and the distance can be calculated so unlike the wave generated by EDM the GPS signal cannot be analyzed as its point of origin so that's one thing you need to keep on mind so uh, then the main signal uh, L band carrier wave are modified by two ranging codes access uh, clear Cost acquisition code and uh, precise code. So, we will talk about these sets of codes later. Uh, an L1 frequency is transmitted twice once per CA quad bits and once with P, P code, and also L2 frequency is only encoded with P codes. And on the other hand, so these uh, the distance measurements of elapsed time. Uh, between the signal's transmission by satellite and its arrival to the receiver requires two clocks as I mentioned earlier. So one is satellite and one is in the receiver. So comp complication is compound compounded because uh, to correct to have a correct representation of the distances between them. These two clocks need to be perfectly synchronized with one another because uh, perfect synchronization is physically impossible the problem is addressed mathematically then so in future so uh, as I was saying um, the calculation of range um, which we have to measure from GPS receiver to the satellite has to be uh, 
has to be measured, calculated by the multiplication of time elapsed between signal transmission and the speed of light as the EDM. So the discrepancy of my one micro uh, microsecond uh, or one millionth of a second uh, from perfect synchronization uh, between the clock and broad the GPS satellite and the clock in the receiver uh, can create range uh, up to 300 meters so it is far beyond the ac acceptable limit mm, for all uh, serving works uh, GPS serving works so uh, that's uh, about GPS ranging so let's move forward then we have to uh, pay attention towards the types of uh, signals as I uh, told you earlier one is code precision uh, code which means CA code in other words so when it comes to CA code it's about uh, uh, like uh, you know uh, these codes uh, P, P code, CA code uh, and also navigation code uh, basically designed to carry information from uh, GPS satellites to receivers uh, and also uh, navigation code they are modulated into carrier waves as uh, the new M, L2, C, L1, C code as well so unlike navigation code uh, the, uh, these codes uh, are not uh, vehicles for broadcasting inf information but um, has been uploaded by the control segment instead um, they carry raw data from GPS receivers uh, derive their position and time measurements so something you need to uh, keep that on your mind so when it comes to CA code uh, it's one code assigned to each GPS satellite so this particular series of ones of zeros mm, and but at the rate of uh, which it generated is uh, 10 times uh, slower than P code its uh, code rate is 1.023 million bits per second so it is 10 times slower than P code so here satellite identification is quite uh, straightforward not only does the uh, GPS satellite broadcast its own unique uh, 1023 bit CA code but it also repeat its um, CA code uh, every millisecond so legacy CA codes uh, is broadcast on N1 only so this 30 meter accuracy easily obtained with uh, CA code so the starting point of each uh, code generated by satellite is unique so no two satellites have same starting point or approach so it's also available for every user and legacy CA code is broadcast on L1 only something additional so when it comes to P code bit uh, different so when it comes to P code uh, uh, it's called uh, as the precise code that's why it's called P code it's a particular series of ones as zeros as I usually told and generated at rate of 10.23 million bits per second so it carries both L1 and L2 a very long and the length of this is 37 weeks and and there are 2, two to 10 to the 14 power 10 to the 14 power bits uh, 
in code so twice amount of that so each gps signal satellite is assigned a part of a p code all is on and then repeat this portion every seven days so this assignment of a one particular week of 30 of the 37 um, long p code to each satellite helps a gps receiver distinguish one satellite transmission from another in other words if a satellite uh, is broadcasting the 14th week of um, p code it must be space vehicle 14 the encrypted p code is py code then uh, so there's a flag subframe flag in subframe 4 of navigation message that tells the receiver when the p code is encrypted into py code so this security system has been activated uh, made in 1994 so it's something in, in history so uh, it's it's done to prevent spoofing from working so uh, spoofing is basically a generation of a false transmission or masquerading uh, into precise code so this uh, countermeasure called anti-spoofing which is symbolized from AS is accomplished uh, by the modulation of a W code to generate more secure Y code that replaces P code so commercial GPS receiver manufacturers are not authorized to use the P Y code directly so they most of have uh, developed uh, proprietary techniques uh, both uh, for carrier wave and pseudo range measurements on L2 interactive. So, dual frequency GPS receivers must also welcome at its spoofing. So, that's about P code. Then, uh, before that, I forgot to mention about L. Uh, so the complication of these two types uh, uh, needs to be defined by using PRN uh, pseudo random noise uh, I have uh, I will explain briefly about pseudo random noise so it's uh, uh, it's complicated uh, that they appear to be noise at first in these codes so this noise is uh, called as a pseudo random noise uh, symbolized in PRN as well so they're carefully designed they have to be uh, they must be capable of uh, repetition and uh, replication so so this uh, short video we discuss about uh, C A code so uh, when I'm talking about C A code uh, there's something addition I would like to add uh, because C A code is uh, can be said as a you know as a vehicle to for the standard position service or SPS uh, which is used for most civilization survey application applications so and also PY code on the other hand uh, provides the same service for precise positioning service PY code uh, PPS so precise positioning service is for P code and standard uh, positioning service from C A code so that's something you need to remember so the idea of a uh, SPS a standard positioning service uh, and also precise positioning service uh, which known as or, uh, or you know PBS was developed by uh, many years ago um, by the D Department of Defense in USA so SPS was designed in purpose of uh, providing minimum level of positioning capability considered uh, consistent with uh, national security um, within range uh, minus meter 100 meters to plus uh, 100 meters so 90 percent of the time when it comes to time range so when intentionally degraded uh, to availability so select availability uh, is the how do I say so it is the deterring so intentional 
dietering uh, uh, of uh, satellite clock uh, by clocks uh, that uh, we can say what is still selected availability is so so the accuracy of uh, it was presented mm, so due to accuracy of CA point positioning as originally rolled uh, was too good so <clears throat> that's why the reason for selective availability otherwise SA is there so as I mentioned earlier so the accuracy was supposed to be plus or minus 100 meters horizontally or within the time range of 95 percent so vertical accuracy has to be within one plus or minus uh, 175 meters so as a fact we can say we can we know uh, it turned out the CA code uh, point position being uh, gave civilian access to accuracy of about uh, 20 or 40 meters uh, plus or minus so that was not according to the plan it was unintentional totally unintentional so satellite clocks accuracy was degraded on CA code on the other hand the intentional error uh, which shows uh, which was called um, SA was good so that's the plus point here so even the clock's accuracy was degraded the SS, SA selective availability was gone so there are two sides of this uh, uh, CA code now so then we can say um, satellite clock errors uh, intentional kind still contribute errors to GPS positioning up to now but selective availability is gone for a while now from 2000 and selective availability was uh, shut down switched off actually on the other hand uh, precise position service uh, was designed to for the in purpose of higher positioning accuracy and was originally uh, available only to users with uh, military authorization so that has changed somewhat and will be uh, discussed later so py code was only military code so that is no longer the case it has been joined by the new military signal code m code so uh, that's uh, about uh, PPS and SPS uh, which were relating with uh, CA code and P code so in this video I explain uh, about uh, GPS ranging and to have an idea about GPS ranging I bit uh, as I had to take EDM concepts as well so I think it's uh, easy easy to understand in that phase so then uh, I had PRN not PRN was discussed here mm, in order to come uh, I understand the complicated nature of these two codes uh, P and uh, cost acquisition so then we talk about the characteristics of uh, those two types of codes so in this video I hope you learned something uh, regarding this GPS ranging and PRN and also P code and CA code. So uh, give us a feedback uh, by putting your comments in comment section and subscribe our channel if you haven't uh, subscribed it yet and turn on the notification bar. See you in the next video. Have a nice day.